All right, so now we've set up our cookie server script, and now we're going to want to create our client script. So on the other Raspberry Pi, I have an instance of idle set up here. We're going to want to open up a new window, and we're going to want to save our file under the cookie directory. And I'm going to call our file cookieclient.py. So since the first step on our server end was importing circuit, ser, uh, socket, You're, you can guess that the first step on our client end is also importing socket. Now, this time our host is not going to be trivial because we actually need to specify an address to connect to. And since both of my pies are assigned to static IP addresses on my router, I know that my uh, grow pie is at the IP address 192.168.1.79 yours will vary and uh, you'll have to look at your router to find out or ping your other Pi or something like that to figure it out. Now the port that we specify has to be the same as the port that we specified last time. What did I use? 5060? 5560. So 5560. And then just like last time we set up our socket so we said that our socket is equal to socket dot socket bracket socket dot af underscore inet comma so that's the type of connection and then socket dot sock stream which specifies uh, TCP versus UDP so we set up our socket and then we're going to want to establish a connection with our socket uh, to our host oh and you have to send in a tuple here so host comma port and then we're going to set up a big wall true statement this is going to be a simpler program that doesn't have so many functions to call on and because this is a truly example we're going to have a command and we're going to say our command is going to be our input of enter your command so it's going to prompt us oops uh, close off that bracket. It's going to prompt us with a request for a uh, command and then we're going to say if our command is equal to exit. This was a key word in uh, the server section so we're going to uh, send exit request to other end first so we're going to say we're going to send data and what are we going to send? We're going to send our encoded command uh, and then we're going to break out of this loop and otherwise we are going to have a possibility of the command kill which was a special special one that um, we specified on the server so if it's kill then we're going to uh, send kill command and it knows what to do with that so again we're going to send it and we're going to have to encode it as a string because that's what we're expecting to receive on the other end in this case and then of course we're going to break out of this loop and otherwise we're going to send our message which we are going to have to uh, encode Now we have sent our message and you kind of go, okay, uh, now what? Well, now you're going to wait for your reply and your reply is going to be equal to receiving whatever it is that comes back. And again, you can adjust your buffer rate. In this case, I'm going to leave it as 1024. So now we've received our reply back. And because we have such a trivial example, the only thing we're going to do with our reply is we're going to print it. So we're going to take our reply, we're going to decode it, and we're going to print it. We're going to decode it as a UTF-8. And then if we were to break out of this while true loop at all, we're going to close down our socket. Let's give this a save. So now we have our cookie client set up and we have our cookie server set up. Make note that uh, you need to make that adjustment in your bind for the tuple. Now, because I'm on Wi-Fi in a basement and the connection is really slow, I'm going to be executing my server in the terminal because this is more responsive for me. So I'm going to be navigating to the desktop, to the cookie folder, and in here we have our cookie server.py file. So we're gonna execute that using Python 3.
And there we go. So we've created a socket, and now our socket bind is complete. And now it's oh, I spelled complete wrong. How embarrassing! And so our socket bind is complete, and now we are waiting. So in this program, we are currently we've set it up, and now I think we're stuck in our data transfer, uh, waiting for receiving of data. Yeah. So we're in our data transfer, and we're waiting to receive data now. Okay. So what we need is to have somebody come along and connect to our GrowPy. And on our PlayPy, we have created our cookie client program here. So I'm going to execute cookie client. And there we go. We're now waiting to enter our command. If we navigate back to the other one, this is our server end. We see that we are now connected to, this is the IP address of our uh, PlayPy, and this is the second part of the address. So here we go, we are connected, and it specified that. Now it's asking us for a command. Well, remember our commands are get, repeat, uh, kill, quit, and anything else. So let's try get. Oh, cool, yo, what's up? So, and it says data has been sent. So that was it calling on the stored value here, yo, what's up, in our cookie server. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's try another command, repeat and apples, appeals, applies. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So it took our first segment, split it by the space, just like we wanted it to, and then it regurgitated everything else. And everything else can have spaces because we only split by spaces once, right? Okay, cool. Now, if you type in repeat, and space nothing, well then that second part isn't gonna have anything we're gonna crash our program and in the interest of speed, I didn't decide to do that. So if I just type in some garbage, it says it doesn't know the command because it doesn't register as one of the four that we have specified. Uh, if we wanted to exit this, we can. See, we exited it and we are now back to our terminal. Looking over here, we see our server is very sad because our client has left us and now it's waiting for another connection. Going back, let's start up that connection again, make it happy. There we go, enter your command, and here we see it has connected again to our server. The final command that we haven't tested yet is kill. When we kill, we exit as the client and we're back to our uh, prompt here, which means that the program has closed down. And over here, we see that our server has shut down. So there you go, there's a trivial example of using TCP communication to transfer data back and forth between your two Raspberry Pis. Uh, in the next following couple of videos, I'm going to be showing you how you use this in the context of catching our cookie thief security system by turning on a LED when a sensor uh, detects that the temperature is not right, so like a warning status LED. So we're going to be employing the GPIO lessons that we've gone over before, as well as the concept of importing modules uh, so that we can get like a main master file going and pull on smaller modules that we create. So I'll see you in that video. Hope you enjoyed this one.